Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to install or create a brand new Sidefinity application using NuGet packages only. You don't need to install anything, just having Visual Studio you will be able to have an instance of uh, Sidefinity running on your machine. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do, let's go uh, in here. I'm going to take my face out of there <laughs> first. And the first thing I'm going to open up Visual Studio, as you can see, this is Visual Studio 20, uh, 2022. You can do that with Visual Studio 19 if you want. Uh, that's fine too. Um, the first thing I want to do, I would like to create a brand new project. We don't, we, before even I can think of creating this with um, with Sidefinity, I need to create the type of application that Sidefinity will require. So I'm going to say File, New Project, and let's go ahead and create it. It has to be a project, of course. And it needs to be of kind ASP.NET framework, not standard and not .NET Core. It has to be a very simple ASP.NET framework and pretty much is going to be framework 4.8 for the latest version of Sidefinity. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look for something that starts with the word ASP.NET. There are hundreds of different templates. Let's click on ASP.NET Web, for instance. You'll notice there is some something has the word core in it, try to stay away from that. Don't use anything that has core or standard in it. What we're really looking forward to is something that has the word .NET Framework. So make sure this is the one that you are choosing that has the word .NET Framework in it. There will be a C-sharp one. There will also be a Visual Basic one. We're going to go with the C-sharp. We'll click on that and we'll say Next. Now we'll give it a name and we'll leave it somewhere. We'll call it, for instance, uh, um, we'll call it SF. Uh, 14.3 uh, for instance there you go because right now I'm going to show you how to do that with 14.3 it will be the same thing whether you're using 14.2 or 14.1 or in the future probably when they come up with Siphon 15 or 16 in the future it will be very very similar on how you're going to be able to create a brand new application uh, without downloading anything or a project manager or anything from Siphon itself all right I'm going to put it here in a folder uh, let's leave it like that and the most important part is you have to go into the framework in here. You might have a lot of different frameworks like I have in here. Notice it has to be 4.8 at this time. Maybe in the future they will move to something else. But if you're using Sidefinity 14, 14.1, 14.2, 14.3, these will require framework 4.8. If you don't see 4.8 here, that means you do not have the latest framework installed. You need to leave everything alone, shut down Visual Studio, Go to the Microsoft download site and download the framework for 4.8. And then when you come back, hopefully it will show up automatically because it will tell you that the framework 4.8 has been installed on your machine. Sounds good. All right. We'll click on 4.8 and we'll say create. We're not done yet. It's still going to have to ask you one more very important question. There, as you can see, five different kind of application for ASP.NET for the framework 4.8. It could be a completely empty application, it could be a web forms application, MVC, web API, or a SPA application in case you want to use something like React or Angular or Vue. So the question is which one of those is correct for Sidefinity? And this is very important. Most people would make the mistake saying because I use MVC a lot with Sidefinity, it's going to be an MVC project. You would be incorrect if you do that. Unfortunately, it will not work because Sidefinity currently is not an MVC project. The only two that will work are the first two, the empty one and the web forms one. Okay, nothing else will work. I can start with web forms, but that's fine. I can actually also start with empty, which I personally like to do. So I can install only the minimum that will be required for Sidefinity to work. So I'll say empty. Uh, notice I'm not going to click on anything for web forms, MVC or web app. You can leave the HTTPS configuration on or off. That's definitely up to you. I'm going to turn it off for this one and will say create. That will take only a few seconds and you will notice I will have a very, very small project, which is an ASP.NET project based on framework 4.8, but it's completely empty. It has no files in it. The only thing is available is the web.config file, which is also almost empty inside of there. Sounds good so far? All right. How do I turn this project into a Sidefinity real application? Well, you'll notice in Sidefinity, it has a lot of different folders. It has some files and it, there are tons of different things that will have to be installed, especially for Bootstrap and the templates and the bin folder has almost 400 different assemblies. How are we going to get all this stuff? 
Well, the nice thing is this is going to be using NuGet packages. So I'm going to right click on SF143, that's the name of my project. And I'm going to say, let's go ahead and manage the packages for NuGet. All right. You will notice in here, uh, maybe we can update the, uh, the Rosalind compiler in here, but I'm going to leave it alone for right now. I'm going to do something, which is I'm going to like to click on browse. And let's see if I can find out if there are any Sitefinity um, um, packages, in NuGet packages available for me. And you will notice there are tons, but none of them seem to be the original or official NuGet packages from Progress, the company that makes Sitefinity itself. All these are third-party companies that are creating um, main packages for Sifinity itself, but not the core, not the, the one official coming from there. So what's going on in there? Well, notice on the right side, we are using the Microsoft package source, which is nougat.org. Well, actually, uh, Progress does not put their official Sifinity Nougat packages in nougat.org from Microsoft. They have their own sources. So the first thing you want to do to make this happen is to click on this gear in Visual Studio. And you will notice the NuGet Package Manager sources will have these two. I'm going to add another one in here. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Sitefinity, for instance, in here. The important part is the source. So I'm going to paste here the line. And you can uh, pause the video here for a minute. And maybe you can write this down. This is an HTTPS. It's going to nuget.sitefinity.com slash nuget. Okay? Uh, this is exactly how to be spelled. So uh, pause it for a second, write it down, and add it. And we'll say update this guy we'll say okay all right so now i'm going to switch from the nougat.org and i wanted to go to the sitefinity one and now i'm going to look for the word sitefinity again and at this time we'll see all the official ones with the progress logo next to it now things look much much better and it looks like we'll be able to do this all right but there is another problem now the problem now is there are a lot of different assemblies i don't know which one how, or different packages i don't know which one to install there's things that starts with the word progress dot something like progress of sifinity and if you go down a little bit there will be other ones that starts with the word telerik dot something so i don't know which ones is which well it all depends on what uh, point of your development or cycle you're in if this is brand new to you and you would like to start uh, with Sifinity just trying to learn it and see what's, uh, what it offers you and so on, you probably want what we call the kitchen sink. That means you want every single module installed so you can play around. If you are doing this because you intend to go to production really soon, um, you probably don't want to install the kitchen sink if there are a lot of different modules in Sifinity that you're not going to use. So you might just want to be wasting time when Sifinity starts to loading things in memory that will never be used. So if you're doing this for production, you might want to actually start with the one that says progress.sitefinity. That one is the core assemblies that you need to make Sitefinity work, but it doesn't have everything inside of it. In my case in here, I'm going to look for something that starts with the word Telerik. So we'll say dot all. Let's see if we can find something that has the word all in it. And this guy, see the difference? Progress of Sitefinity, and this one is Telerik.sitefinity.all. This one is the kitchen sink, okay? The latest one at the time of recording of this video is 14.3.8021, uh, okay? Uh, if you would like a specific version, you can bring down the combo box in here and you will see there are tons of different uh, releases of Sifinity still available for you. You can go all the way to 6 point something. <laughs> so uh, 6.35 is still available. So you can actually go ahead several years back to install exactly how Sifinity was at that release. In my case, I'm going to leave it as the last one uh, from a few days ago, and I'm going to say install. Remember, all of these different uh, dependencies will be installed. There will be tons. I'm going to say install there. And what uh, Visual Studio is doing for me right now is actually accessing the NuGet package available on the Sifinity sources. Um, and it's trying to pull down the 8021. And once it finds us, it's going to ask us two questions. That is the first question. Uh, to, to say it's okay to preview the changes that will happen in the project and it's going to install the kitchen things. There are some assemblies from AWS, some from Azure, some from a company called Lucene, some from Service Stack, some from Microsoft. There are tons and tons of things that you have to approve that will be installed. And of course, there is a lot of things from Telerik and Progress themselves, which is the core of Sitefinity. I'm going to say okay, and then the final dialogue that will come up right now is for us to accept the license. Remember, this is not only from Progress, but there are tons of different uh, products from outside of Progress. You have to accept all the licenses, we'll say go for it. 
And now we'll sit back and relax. It might take about maybe 45 seconds on my machine here. It's installing, like I said, almost 400 different assemblies in the bin folder. And you will notice here at the bottom, the output is telling you everything it's doing regarding the references to the assemblies. Every once in a while, you'll see it's installing a PowerShell script called .ps1. That's because it needs to also create some folders and put some files in these folders. So the, the good news is you don't have to do much. You just can uh, sit down, relax, and wait for the whole thing to finish. And when it's done, a dialog in Visual Studio will come up saying, too much stuff has changed. Would you like me to reload the project? I'm going to say, of course, yes. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute until it finishes that, and I'll come back uh, as soon as that dialog comes back. All right, great. It took less than a minute, actually, on my machine. I didn't touch the computer since I paused it, and it finished. There are no errors, nothing. And you will notice now that the old project, it was very small with only a web.config file, ended up having multiple folders with tons and tons of different files underneath it, and also some files in here. And it made major changes to the web.config file to match what Siphon is expecting. But again, all that stuff happened by installing that one NuGet package for Telerik.Syfinity.all. So that's the fun part. You can actually bring Syfinity up and uh, running within minutes uh, without actually downloading anything from uh, the Syfinity website or create an account or anything like that. Make sense? All right. Notice that we have not been asked for a license yet. They, we were not been asked for a database yet, which is needed for Sitefinity. So these things will come, of course, when you start running the Sitefinity. All right. So I'm going to right click on the Sitefinity uh, SF143. We'll say, OK, see, has been modified outside the environment. Would you like to reload it? We'll say, yes, yeah, sure. Let's reload the whole thing to make sure everything has been refreshed. There we go. And now I'm going to right click on the SF143. We'll say build this project. And within a few seconds, again, it will build hopefully successfully at the bottom and here will be will say build successful. And at this point, I can run the whole thing in IS Express, which of course available with Visual Studio by clicking on the button at the top. And I get to choose whether I want to run it in debug mode or in the run without debug mode. However, I would like F5 or Shift F5 if you would like to do that. So we'll give it notice here, the icon at the bottom that lets us know that it's building the entire project for the first time. That's why it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, after that will be incremental because most of the OBJ uh, files would have been created already if nothing have changed. And there we go, build succeeded. We are in a good shape at this point. Excellent. Let's go ahead and click on the IS Express Google Chrome where you can use any browser, of course. When we run that, we'll ask, would you like to run in debug mode or run mode? We'll say, let's go ahead and do it without debugging for this one. We'll say, OK. And let me go ahead and wait for it to come up. And there we go. I'll bring it to this screen as well. And there it is. I'm going to bring in my default browser, which is Chrome. IS Express automatically chose to bring up uh, the whole site on uh, port number 65214. That would be different every time, of course you uh, make a change or you would like to start on a new port, you can do that as well. But in my example in here, we'll start on 65214. And what's going to happen at this point, folks, is going to have to uh, ask you for the license first because it couldn't find the license. It looks under the app underscore data under the Sitefinity folder and it will look at didn't find the license. So you cannot keep going. Uh, even if this is new to you and you don't have a license, go to the website, request a 30 day trial and you'll get an email. Just uh, go ahead and use the trial license if you'd like. I have a license already, so I'm going to click on use a license in here. There we go. And we'll choose a file. It's an LIC file. Let's see, for instance, maybe I have it in here really quickly. I think that it is. And we'll say activate the license. It will show me all the features. I'm going to say continue. And now within a few seconds, hopefully, we will be able uh, to get in. What happens once you get in is going to try to actually load the site, but it cannot <laughs> because it couldn't find uh, actually a database. Uh, you require a database to run it. It could be SQL Server, SQL Server Express, Oracle, or MySQL. In my case in here, I already have SQL Express installed on my machine. I also have the regular SQL Server installed on my machine for development. So I can use either one of the first two if I want to. I'm going to use the SQL Express one just for testing. We'll put the name of the instance of SQL Express in here and we'll say continue. It's going to start uh, building some things, but all of a sudden it finds out that we don't even have an admin. So it will stop saying, wait a second, we, can't, we, we do not want this site to be orphaned. 
If I continue, nobody will be able to log in. So at least give me one admin so that admin can get into the system. So I'm going to come in here. We'll give it my name. The email, we'll call it lino at foo.com is fine. And I'll give it a password in here. There we go. And admin 1234. All right. There you go. And I'm going to say I am done. And now we're going to be patient. I'm going to stop the video again. This might actually take about maybe, let's say, about maybe a one and a half minute. There are tons of tables that have to be created. So you'll have to be patient for about a half, minute and a half for everything to be created. So you're going to see these gears in here. But once it's done, it's going to log us in automatically into the back end of Cyfinity. And at that point, you'll be ready to go. So I'll come back after the minute and a half of creating the database. And voila, it did it after maybe about a minute and a half. It finished and now I have a brand new website, web application inside Finity running locally here on my machine that I can start testing by going to pages or going to content and creating brand new pages. This is completely empty right now. There are no pages, no content. So you will get to be able to start in creating your application. But hopefully this was helpful to you to see how easy it is to actually be able to create from nothing. From completely zero, you can create a brand new Sidefinity application. And after that, you can actually go ahead and get even a trial license if you want from their website. But there is nothing to install. You can do everything in Visual Studio by using NuGet package. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, learned a lot from it, and hopefully it will make your life easier. And we'll see you again in the next video.